Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our worship service here at East Columbus Christian Church. Uh, as you well know, we live stream our services each week so that those who are not able to worship with us in person are able to worship right along uh, with us. But uh, this week, due to the sensitive nature of what we're going to be talking about in our sermon series, Tell Me the Story, we've chosen not to live stream today's uh, services. Instead, what we're going to do is show you a video of last year's series of Tell Me the Story featuring Brian and Janice Langford and how faithful God was through uh, their tragedy of, of losing a son. Uh, this is the only Sunday we're going to do this. Uh, we'll be back to live streaming next week, but uh, we just hope that you'll trust us that this was the best decision not to uh, live stream today's services, and uh, we look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks a lot. God bless. Have an awesome day. Awesome. Welcome to East Columbus Christian Church this morning where it is warm inside. We hope in a lot of ways it's warm inside, right? We do welcome you if you're joining us online. We welcome you guys to our service uh, today as well. Uh, the big announcement at the beginning here is to not forget our Thanksgiving dinner at 6 o'clock this evening. Um, we'll be in the gymnasium. We're going to eat in the gymnasium, and then I think we have some uh, like a concert, some entertainment um, or some worship, I should say, for you here in the sanctuary. So we'll give you instructions for that later as well. But uh, the meat is all uh, furnished. We, we uh, are cooking as, a, as we speak, turkey and ham and having all that ready. And the rest will be a pitch-in, so there'll be plenty of food. Feel free to bring something if you want. But please plan to attend and fellowship with us at 6 o'clock this evening. Uh, at this time, I'm going to ask if you will stand. And I'm going to open us up in prayer, and we'll be standing and ready to worship. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, uh, we do just thank you for this time of year. Uh, Thanksgiving and Thanksgiving Day's coming, but wow, we need to be so much more thankful day by day uh, for all your blessings and all you do. Uh, Father, we come right now asking that you would fill us, let us fill your presence, and fill us with your wisdom. And may the things that we sing, say, read, do, act, and interact with each other all be pleasing to you this morning. We pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. Amen? All right, man. Let's, let's, uh, let's sing the Lord this morning. nothing worth more that will ever come close nothing can compare you're our living hope your presence Lord I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence Lord Holy Spirit you are well Flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence.
I worship you. 
stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop sing that again even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop even when i don't see it you're working even when i I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all. crimson stain he washed in white as snow Lord now indeed I find thy power in thine alone can change the leper's song morning. John chapter 16 verse 33 reads, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. 
this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Now that you're humming along and reminiscing on the nursery school days, it's important to remember that the light you once shone has not gone out. Underneath the stress of your life, the burden of your past, and the wall built up from heartbreak, there's a little light still burning inside. When we accept Christ into our hearts, the Holy Spirit takes up residence in us. As the light of the world, he sparks a flame in our hearts. But time goes on, and the devil does his thing, and you feel as though that light has been stomped out. Thoughts about your past, the distance in your relationship with God, the pain from your experiences in the church, you can feel like you're being forced to put your little light under a bucket. But no, no amount of darkness can shroud over the light of our Lord. It burns within us. It shines when we extend a helping hand, lend a kind word, or cry out to him for healing. The world can be a dark place. We can feel pain and betrayal, even at the hands of those who also have a little light burning inside of them. But no matter how many times the light is nearly extinguished, it never goes out. So let it shine, that little light of yours, shall we pray. Oh God, walk with us today. Watch over us tonight. Thank you for yesterday's help, today's blessings, and tomorrow's grace. Amen. Jesus died my soul to save, my lips shall still repeat, Jesus made it all, all to him I owe, sin had left a crimson stain. We started a sermon series that I titled, Tell Me the Story. We thought it was important for members of our congregation to share uh, some of the circumstances that they've been going through uh, and how God had faithfully been in the midst of those circumstances and, and brought them through. Um, today, uh, we have uh, some guests with us that's uh, no stranger to a lot of you, in fact, one of them. Uh, might even look a little familiar to you because she looks a lot like her mother, uh, I think. Uh, 
Janice and Brian Langford are here. Janice is Mary Bell Barr's daughter. And uh, three weeks ago, we started by talking with Will and Jess about uh, anxiety and depression and how God has been faithful through that. Last week, we talked with uh, Scott and Elizabeth Raylander about all the health struggles that they've been through and how God's been faithful through that. Today, Brian and Janice are going to talk with us about a, a pain that hopefully uh, nobody here will ever feel, uh, that not to diminish the others that we've talked about, but it's, it's probably uh, uh, the most difficult that a person can endure, um, and that is the loss of a child. And uh, they've written a book called uh, Beauty and Hope from the Ashes, and they have copies of the book with them. I'll just go ahead and do the advertisement now, do the commercial now. Uh, we have uh, copies of those out in the foyer, and uh, they'd love for you to have one. Uh, $18 is a suggested donation, but don't let that be a barrier uh, for you if you want to want the book, because uh, you're going to want the book after you hear their story, because there's so many things in the book that we're not going to have time to go into today. Uh, but uh, Brian and Janice, uh, man, I was just through tear-filled eyes. I read this whole book and uh, was challenged in my own faith and, and felt your struggle and your pain, uh, and I just knew that we had to, uh, had to put this before our congregation today for everyone to hear. So uh, would you all just give a welcome to Brian and Janice Langford as they come. <clears throat> and uh, I almost wore black and gold for you guys today. I almost did. For Vanderbilt, of course. Not Purdue. Not Purdue, Not Purdue. Not Purdue just okay. Vanderbilt. Uh, let me make sure that's turned on here. It didn't sound like it was. This one's green, Rob. Check, check. There we go. That one is. That. Okay. Are we on there? There we go. Okay, okay. we're on. Yes. We're on. In case you didn't hear that, for Vanderbilt, not that other black and gold not school. Not the other West Lafayette school. But you have connections at both. They both won yesterday. They both won so yesterday. But it was we, a good day at our Yeah, house. we don't want to talk about that. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. Uh, we'll we we want to. Yeah, let's go back to the book. But go ahead. Would you mind just sharing a little bit of, of how you got to this point today, how you got to this, and I'll just let you take it for a while, and then we'll talk about some other things Great. in here. Go ahead. Sounds good. So I'm Janice um, Barr, now Langford. Um, my brother Eddie is in the back, and his wife Vicki. I have... Um, a neighbor that's here and a cousin that's here. Uh, we grew up, Eddie and I grew up as a cradle Christian, I believe the term is called. And we came in mom's womb to East Columbus Christian Church when it was on Indiana Avenue. Or, yeah, when it was down the other location, we were here. Um, we were here when this burned down the first time. I remember getting in the car and mom and dad, Norman, or dad, they, like we came here. We were out in the parking lot watching it burn. I remember that very vividly. Um, this is the baptistry that I was baptized one April. Um, this is just like coming home. You took out the pews, the choir loft at the back, <laughs> but um, it's still home. And we thank you dearly because... A lot of you helped us um, get through a very difficult time in our life. So um, Brian and I, Brian grew up in Taylorsville, but then they moved to the city. So we met at Columbus East High School, and, and he did come here as well. So this is his church as well, his home. And uh, we got married here when it was all beautifully red, red carpet, <laughs> red pews. And we got married in December, so it was great for that. The colors worked well, didn't they? Yeah. Said yes. I said yes. I said yes. So Justin was born in Franklin, Indiana, because at that time we uh, were living in Franklin and he was born in, at Johnson Memorial Hospital in 91, and then we kept moving a little farther south to get back home, so we moved back home, and Justin was in the nursery 
right when it was down that way a little bit. And Kyle was born here in 1994 at Columbus Regional Hospital. So um, we feel like you all are our family. Mm. And we know there are some of you here that don't know us, so thank you uh, for coming. And we hope to just share a little bit about our journey and how our faith and our friends and our community were our foundation through that time. Yes. So with that, I, I would just say, you know, first of all, we recognize we all suffer. And if we haven't, we're going to. That, that is part of the now and the not yet, you know, until Christ comes again. But in that, um, our family was living life large. Uh, we had just been very blessed. We raised the boys in the church. We've now lived in Zionsville for 23 years. Uh, been, the boys have been active all along life and were baptized early into Christ. And uh, we're just blessed. Uh, they made good decisions. Life was going great. They went to the schools they wanted to go to. They performed and excelled in, in every way, uh, mostly as men of God. Um, and then I was on a business trip. Uh, I traveled quite a bit, and I was in Switzerland, uh, Germany, and actually was living there as an expat and flying back and forth. And I was on a trip. I was in a hotel in Switzerland. And at um, about 3.57 in the morning, um, my iPhone just starts screaming at me. So I get up, stumble across the hotel, and I pick up the phone, and I saw it was a call from the States. And, you know, I just answered the phone and, you know, good morning. Um, this is Brian. And it was Justin's boss. Justin had graduated. He was a mechanical engineer, and he had graduated from Vanderbilt, which is why we celebrate Vanderbilt and enjoy that community. Uh, and he had been working at Allison Transmission as an intern for three years, and then he had graduated and had now been working there for a year. And I knew that he was on a business trip in Arizona, um, and we had, you know, all of us texting back and forth while he's out there, et cetera, the night before. And I get this phone call, and his boss just lets me know Justin's been in an accident. And at first, I'm like, okay, I'm asleep. Um, probably broke his leg or something or fell running because he was going to take a run that night. Um, and the next thing you know, he wants to hand me off to the social worker at the hospital. And then things unravel. And we're told that Justin um, was in Flagstaff, Arizona, and they were doing engineering testing and calibration testing. Um, and as they were coming back down the mountain from the ski resort that evening, um, his truck flipped and Justin was pinned and he went for 37 minutes without oxygen. Um, so that began a series obviously, of compose yourself, pray, get as much information as we could, talk to the doctors, understand everything possible, just crying out to God, because I can't, I can't be there. I can't fix this. I then, of course, made the calls to Janice and to Mary Bell and Norman and to my parents, and um, a, a series of things went forth, and I, I'll just share a few of those with you. But what I hope you see through this isn't, isn't us. It's not about us. But I hope that you see how God was working through all of this and that he is with us. Um, as soon as I hung up with Janice and family and Justin's almost fiance, Kelsey, uh, he had purchased the ring and put it in our safe and spent a year preparing to propose. Um, so I called Kelsey, and she was rushing over to the house in Indiana to be with Janice and Kyle. Um, and then I, I called upstairs to another hotel room to a colleague of mine that um, she worked on my team. She was a brilliant engineer. And I said, Katie, I, I'm sorry, it's four in the morning and I just woke you up, but I, I need you to come down to my room and I'll tell you why later. What a phone call. <laughs> well, she did. And she came downstairs and um, she orchestrated all of my travel to minimize the amount of time it would take me to get from Basel, Switzerland to Arizona to be with Janice and Kyle because they were going to meet with Kelsey, meet me in Arizona to be with Justin. She did all of that as I then called one of our dearest friends up in Boone County, uh, the Lambs. And as I called Don Lamb, uh, big farmer up there, Don already knew. We'll just leave you to read more and understand that. 
Don knew. Sorry. Um, he and his wife, Jody, and their daughter, Shelby, were in transit to Zionsville. They didn't know what they were going to say. They didn't know what they were going to do. But they were going to be there. As I called from Switzerland to Boone County, Don answers his cell phone. There's obviously a time difference, but it's getting late here. They're at an intersection that I know very, very well in the county. And at that intersection, there's a cross. So we continue on. After we get things arranged, um, takes a little bit. I, I go downstairs and I wait for the taxi driver to take me to the hotel or to the airport. And on the way to the airport, um, I'm talking with the neurologist and we're going some pretty graphic discussions about what's taking place. As we get out, as I get out of the taxi cab at the airport, uh, the driver comes to me and he's in very broken English and he's crying. And he just says, sir, I'm sorry, but I overheard your conversation. And all I want to say is that I am praying for you. As you travel to be with your son. We then enter the airport where everyone there was so welcoming. They jumped over hoops and went everywhere possible to make arrangements so I could have private space while waiting on the flight um, to help us so I could make phone calls, stay updated with doctors, keep Janice updated, etc. Uh, I then got on the first flight, which went from Switzerland to uh, Heathrow Airport. And on that flight, uh, they had arranged, I had the first seat as close to the door as possible because I had a very tight connection. And as I sat down, I actually needed to switch seats with one gentleman and he was very gracious. And he overheard the flight attendant just bringing me water and tissues and um, understood vaguely what was going on. And then throughout the flight, he just sat there writing in his seat and working and I'm very familiar with that. You know, probably filling out his expense report. Right, trying to get work done. As we got off the flight and I was waiting for the door and I was the first one to run out, he just said, sir, I just want you to know I'm praying for you and I just want to give you this letter. As I read that letter a couple hours later, uh, this man had written um, front and back, just handwritten the most beautiful letter that was filled with scripture and filled with prayer. And he related to suffering as he shared that he and his wife, who were from Dallas, had recently gone through um, life events where they had conjoined twins and the suffering that went along with that and how he was praying for us and encouraging us that God is with us. Um, from there, we got to Heathrow and they ran me through a maze. I'll let you read the book about that if you like. Uh, but I finally got to Arizona where Allison Transmission have been taking care of Janice and Kyle and Kelsey and our family, and they Pony expressed us all to be together uh, where we then met at the hospital. He's leaving out quite a few places where God was with him um, on his journey from Basel to Arizona and um, also with Kyle and Kelsey and I as we went from Zionsville to Phoenix to Flagstaff. It's people just showing up and being Christ and maybe you don't know what to say but you just come and you sit and you pray. Um, I will say when we were in Arizona the doctors and the nurses were all very um, they prayed with us in Justin's room, they were very, um, they wanted to know specifically uh, just about Justin. They were caring for him, so they wanted to know more about him. They um, just loved on us. I don't know if they were all Christians, but they definitely, if they weren't, they saw Christ 
in that room and in that hallway, um, our week that we were there. Um, we also um, had community with Donate Life Arizona. We read the book. Justin um, was able to donate organs and save other lives, and we have other connections and uh, family through his gift of um, life to them. And when we came back to Indiana, we had, of course, um, we go to New Hope Christian Church in Whitestown, Indiana. My brother goes to New Hope Christian Church here. So <laughs> it, sometimes it gets a little confusing. But um, we have family and community there. We had a community with Alice in Transmission. They um, still love on us eight years after Justin's accident. Um, just the town of Zionsville, because we've lived there long enough now that um, that's a home as well. So through the schools, um, through the Indiana Donor Network, we have a lot of touch points that um, support us when things get difficult. In each of those situations, with, with each of those um, fast-forwarding a bit, uh, we have had a beautiful opportunity, just like Justin's funeral. It was a beautiful celebration of the life that we have. And as, as difficult as that is, all I can tell you is God's word is true. And that when he says that we will have a peace that surpasses our understanding, it is true. And we continue to be comforted through the years as we had the opportunity to witness to others to through Donate Life, we get a lot of audiences where we share Christ, whether it be junior highs, high schools, med schools, public, wherever it may be. Um, in the funeral itself, there were well over a thousand people there. Um, and there were some amazing just moments of God working and witnessing through that celebration of the beautiful gift of life he had given us in Justin um, and how that continues uh, because we have the hope of Christ. And we know that we will be together again. Well, Janice, from the moment your mother gave me this book, uh, and I started reading, it, it, it was very difficult to put down. Uh, and we don't have time to cover everything I'd like to cover in this. But some things that really jumped out at me um, was, first of all, a, a lot of times we don't see God working until after it's happened. It's kind of in hindsight. But along this journey, you could see his hand all over this. As you're traveling, as things are unfolding, you can see God right in the midst of it. But even seeing God in the midst of it, Brian, you alluded to something in here that you struggle with, that Justin was such a good kid and such a successful young man. You struggled with the why, God, when there's so much junk out there and there's someone like this that's serving you and and living for you and and doing the things that he's doing why um can you speak to that a little bit and what was what was going through your heart and mind and how i mean i'm sure there's days you still might ask that question can can you just talk about that for a moment yeah i um we we all wonder right i mean why why is there suffering? Well, we know we live in a fallen world. We live in an evil world, and we're, we're not to the full kingdom of God yet. Um, come, Lord Jesus. But in those moments, as much peace as we had, there's still the grief that we go through, and, and death is the enemy. And we know that, but we also know who has victory over that death, and that is Christ. But we're still human, and we hurt, and we suffer. And, and, and in that, I remember a conversation um, with my admin at Rose Charlene, as we were trying to sort all kinds of things out of, am I going back to Germany? Am I staying in Indiana? Um, and I'm, I'm talking to Charlene, who is kind of like my work spouse. You know, we, we <laughs> I had helped her through a, a painful divorce and just ministered to her heart. And as we were talking one day and we were, she was talking about people are afraid to talk to you, that, that they're not sure what to say to you. And I just encourage Charlene, if they don't mind tears, I don't mind tears, please. We're all family here. Just have them come up. But in that, she just asked how I was doing, and I shared that 
Um, I said, Charlie, you know, the thing that gets me is Justin was doing everything right. He was making good decisions. He was performing. He was living for the kingdom. He loved people. God had given him so many gifts. I don't understand. At 23 years. And as the words were coming out of my mouth, they stopped being heard. (laughs) And I paused. And I just looked at her and said, the scripture that is coming to mind as I'm sitting here venting about not understanding is that, Every day that we are waiting for the Lord's return, every day that someone else who is making a bad decision, someone else who maybe is even inflicting evil on others, is a day of God's grace until so that they could maybe know him again someday. Um, So that that helped me wrestle a bit with the rest of the evil in the world. Um, But in the end, I also just had the peace knowing that Justin was home. Amen. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and Janice, uh, you were you were talking in in the book, and and I left my glasses in the office, so hopefully I can I can read this. Um, that might not be a bad idea if if I could. But yeah, that's uh, yeah. I've been known to borrow females' glasses. And there you go. Yeah, okay. I, whatever it takes to. Oh, that's much better. Uh, You said on page 208 in your book, in our world of instant gratification, constant communication and technology, it's difficult to grasp that God's ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. We cannot make his plans and purposes conform to ours no matter how hard we try. Um, What a difficult way to, you know, uh, experience that. But one thing that we have talked about here in the last three weeks is that God doesn't waste a suffering. Not that he causes them, but sometimes he allows them to happen. And there's, there's lessons to be learned. There's, there's um, opportunities to point people to Jesus. And, and when you think of that verse that you t- reference in Isaiah 55, um, you know, today, what, what have you seen um, some of the ways that you've seen this awful circumstance bring glory to Jesus? Well, um, it has been eight years since Justin died. Um, and we have been able to um, meet and talk to classmates of Justin's that um, share stories of... Um, things that he did or things that he said or just being there that um, make my heart feel good. Uh, We, through his gift of organ donation, are able to um, extend our family and uh, meet a 10-year-old boy that is a normal 10-year-old boy now and goes to school and um, can play and Someone received Justin's heart and is still living, and it's not easy. Mm. I mean, my mama heart can get angry still at times, like Brian was talking about why. Um, But I just have to kind of rewind. I'm a little more introspective, and I've spent a lot more time studying the scripture and just knowing that we may not know now Mm. why because we would really like to know why what happened exactly but we don't know why Um, but that God does have a different plan and that Justin's life has touched many others and then now it's just multiplying now because of his unfortunate circumstance at work, um, like things that he did and he created are still there. So they're still talking about that. Um, he just got awarded another patent uh, recently. So he doesn't go away at work and he definitely doesn't go away at home or, you know, with our nieces. Um, 
one of one of our nieces, uh, like illustrated in the book. Um, I just try to think like, how did Naomi feel, or you know, how did other people feel in the Bible when someone was sick, or and God didn't heal everyone, and as badly as we wanted Justin to be healed, God said no, so now we're following and just talking, sharing his love with others and trying to um, let others know it's okay. We may not know why, but we have to keep walking in faith steadfastly. We, we had, um, as a family, we, we always let people know there's when, when, when suffering happens, and this was God moving in our lives, but as Justin, as we left him, as he was wheeled into the emergency room for, or to the operating room for organ recovery, and we gathered together to pray, just Janice and Kyle and Kelsey and I, and, and as we prayed, we said, Lord, we know right now we have one choice to make. We are, are you going to run to you or we're going to run away from you? And, and we are not going to let Satan get a foothold. Father, we are going to cling to you. And in that, our, uh, a key verse in our life, and just all of Romans 8, but, but we have seen, Romans 8, 28, that, that God, again, his word is true. He will, he will work all things together for good for those who love him and those who are called to his purposes. And that includes all the crud. He will take it all just as he did with Joseph in Genesis 50. And even what was meant for evil in this world, God will work in his sovereign ways for good. And now, um, as a co-worker recommended before you ever went back overseas, um, you are studying for ministry, and uh, you have an opportunity now to uh, minister to people um, on a full-time capacity and... Um, you're able to share your heartbreak with people who are going through heartbreak. You, you said something in your book that um, just hit me like a ton of bricks, and that was you now have a greater appreciation for how God felt when he lost his son. Can you speak into that for just a moment and how that has kind of compelled you to, as, as I was talking to Janice on Friday, you were actually taking a final, uh, you know, a second, second career guy taking a final for your MDiv and um, how that has led you to what you're doing now. You know, God has been so good to us and um, in all things and... Um, you know, many of you can relate to the story in Genesis as uh, Abraham was told early the next morning, take your son Isaac up to the mountain. You know, three-day journey. And, and that the, the test of God testing Abraham's faithfulness, uh, of course, God provided a way. And as we've gone through this, uh, what I pray most, many may have, but what I pray most will never know is losing a child. But, but in that, there, there is this extra revelation of God that we have seen in just his compassion and his love for us that is so much we would give anything. I'd give anything to have Justin back, anything to have taken his place. And God had the same opportunity. For us, he gave Christ. But in doing so, he had to give his son. And to, to know the depth of that love, to, know, to see Abraham in Genesis be able to willingly go up the mountain, I, I couldn't have done it. But boy, does that tell me the depth of God's love. And then, yes, now. So um, colleagues, had, they, they just expected I would never return to work. <laughs> they expected I would go into full-time ministry eight years ago. And... Janice has always been my encourager and my coach. And Brian, your ministry is right where you are. And it was, and we've seen the evidence of that. But 
God continued to call. It wasn't the right time. But yes, eight years later, the career I worked my whole life to achieve means nothing. <laughs> I'm thankful for it, and I have left that career um, to pursue full-time ministry, and, and I'm not quite the oldest student in my class, but almost. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, you, you mentioned all of the different people within your church, and, and even, even Kyle's uh, friends and professors, and because he... In the midst of all of this, he's studying for med, in med school to be a doctor. He's got a full summer of school work ahead of him when, when he gets the call. He's worried about going back to school because he thinks you've got to go back to Germany, and he doesn't want mom to be by herself. And God is orchestrating all this. He, he's working all of this out. Um, and can you just talk a little bit about how just the, each individual life in your family, the communities that they were involved in, how they stepped up and just were the hands and feet of Jesus? Well, for Kyle at that time, um, he was also a student at Vanderbilt, and um, you, you also had Isaac Richardson who went to Vanderbilt, but then he was also part of that community. But um, Kyle was involved in Navigators on Vanderbilt's campus, and they, um, well, first of all, Mom and Dad kind of went back door on Kyle a little bit and made a few <laughs> phone calls, even, even though he was an adult, and just said, hey, we just want to make you aware this is what might happen. He, his professors and others. Yeah, stuff. his professors and um, where he lived on campus person that was in charge of that building and um, but Kyle had uh, people to talk to just on campus his friend group that was close from high school every weekend that summer if Brian and I weren't with him in Nashville a friend was with him in Nashville so he was never alone but that um, that is why we love all of our communities because you can't get through something like this alone and um, you need people beside you even if they're just being quiet yeah it took the body of Christ it was um, again friend groups pastors youth groups going down seeing Kyle on the way to a mission trip taking him out to eat um, it was his professors who were Christians who, who reached out to him while he was there um, and have come up to the run that we have had and have continued to reach out and invite him over for dinner and, and just being the body of Christ that extends beyond any geographical or political boundary, brothers and sisters in Christ. Not long after um, the accident, I was in the living room with your mom and dad and Someone as rock solid as your mom and dad um, was not only feeling the pain of um, losing a grandson, but they were feeling the pain that you were going through um, and was really struggling with that. And that was one thing that they both alluded to was that just the community, the church family, the prayers, the visits, the calls, they could feel the love, they could feel the presence of the Holy Spirit uh, because of all of the prayers and, and just the people being uh, involved. And so I would encourage everyone uh, here, if you know of anyone at all that's going through anything, just be there. Just be there. You have no idea. You might not think it's a big deal at the time, uh, but you have no idea... Um, the impact that you can have just by praying and just by being there. And, and again, you know, I've been, you know, the, you, you alluded to the fact that people don't know what to say. And, and I'll, I'll be honest, I've been, I've stood in the lines at funeral homes and heard some of the dumbest things come out of people's mouths. They don't mean it. They don't know what to say. But just your presence. And just being there is huge. And, you know, Tom, uh, when he gave our communion meditation, he referred to, you know, this little light. And, and 
and Justin's light was so bright. And, you know, as it's not biblical, but the old saying, you know, the brightest ones burn out fastest. Um, maybe that's adequate here. I don't, you know, there's, I, it's not why, but certainly fits this case. And he touched so many lives. And, and another thing, and I'll just kind of wrap up with, with this, if you don't mind. Uh, and, and Justin was very musical, no, no doubt, it got that, you know, from you guys and from Grandma, Grandma Barr for sure, uh, and Kyle too. Uh, Probably not from Norman. Not from Norman, yes, I did, I, I assumed that, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Justin was asked one time, and, and Justin uh, played music, he wrote music, and, and uh, was very, very good at it. He was asked, if a person could only take one idea a message, or message away from your music, what would you hope it to be? Justin's response was this, that Jesus is the only way. To know that your son had that philosophy in life as parents, how's that? parents, um, that's what you, you want your children to aspire to be, to, to grow up and be humbly confident, and to be independent, but most importantly, to know Christ and to share Christ's love and um, to know that he's, that's the way you need to go. Yeah, you know, Scripture tells us there's no greater joy than to know that our children are walking in the Lord. And um, while Justin had 23 years on this earth, we he got more out of life than mm-hmm. most people do in a normal lifespan. And, and, and we know it was rich and it was full. But in the end, Justin had five seconds, maybe. I've done all the physics and all the math, and I've calculated everything trying to figure this out. But he had a few seconds of notice that this traumatic accident was happening. And then he was home. Each of us have no idea how much time we have. But to know that Jesus is the only way, that is our hope. And we know that this is not the end. And we know that we will be together again. Amen. And for that, we praise God. Amen. Thank you, guys. Would you guys give them a hand for giving us As our worship team comes, um, one thing that we, I've talked about this a lot, um, and, and Kendall and I reference it often, I mentioned it at Maribel's funeral, you, you can't bury influence, and that just kind of keeps resurfacing, and the influence that, that Justin was able to have on so many people um, will live on. For a long, long time, and um, I'm thankful. I'm th- thank you guys for raising him in the Lord. Uh, I thank Norman and Maribel for raising you in the Lord, and, and Brian, your parents, for raising you to know uh, the Lord as well. And um, we have no idea the lives that we can touch just by being faithful, and just by living for Jesus. And... Uh, we're, gonna, we're just going to offer a song of decision now. I'm, I'm going to ask you to stand uh, right now, and I, don't, I, I just can't say it any better than Brian already has, that God knows exactly how you feel. Um, he gave his son. Whatever it is that you're going through, Hopefully it's never anything quite like this. But whatever it is, he knows the depth of your pain. Jesus knows what it's like to suffer. And um, he's not a God who's far off, just watching from a distance. He's a God who wants to be involved in every single aspect of your lives. And the Bible teaches us that to, to get to know him, 
is through surrendering your life to him, confessing Jesus as the Christ, turning away from the sin that's in your life. And if you've not been baptized into him, to, to do that for the washing away of your sins. If you're here today, and again, one lesson that we've learned, and Brian mentioned, we're not guaranteed the rest of today. So if you're here today and you're not ready to meet Jesus, I urge you don't leave here without taking care of that. Maybe you're here today and you just need prayer. Um, at the very least, would you agree to continue to pray for Brian and Janice and their family? Um, and certainly, after the service, go back and see them, grab a book, hug on them, um, thank them for being here. But if you've got a decision you need to make today, we encourage you to come during this song. Let's bow together. Father, I thank you for your mercy, for your grace, and for your strength when ours is gone. Lord, I thank you for the testimony that we've heard here today. The obvious hand of Jesus, even in the midst of unthinkable circumstances. Lord, I thank you for Brian and Janice's uh, strength and their courage, their willingness to be a vessel, to share your hope and your beauty that can come from ashes. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. When peace like a river attendeth my way When sorrows like sea Billows roll. Whatever my lot, Thou hast taught me to say, It is well. It is well with my soul.
Wow. You guys sound like a choir up here. You guys, that was really good. You guys ought, you ought to give, give God a hand for just, yeah, just for everything he's doing. All right, here's, um, we have a wellness program here at East Columbus Christian, and uh, it starts right now, so I'm going to ask you to be seated again, and then I'll stand you back up in a minute. See, it's part of our wellness program. Now, we really want to introduce to you again uh, this week uh, those men who are going to be on the ballot next week uh, for our um, leadership, our elders, and our deacons. So I want them to be able to stand uh, so that you can see them and um, know who they are. We will vote next week. Again, members can vote, and you are voting for either approval or disapproval um, of elders and deacons, okay? Okay. Those that are up for elders, I know he's not here today, but Rick Caldwell is one of them. Uh, Kenny Howe, Kenny, would you stand, please? Steve Kennedy, is he sick today? Oh, no, okay, so Steve and David Pardick, and he's all the way in the back, okay. And for uh, deacons, Daryl Abner and Dwight Murphy, all right. Thank you, guys. And again, we will take uh, that vote for next week. I'll go ahead and do the other announcements while you're seated, and then we'll uh, stand for the prayer request. Don't forget the Thanksgiving meal at 6 o'clock today in the gym. If some of you guys, gals, whoever want to help us, we're going to go down after the service and set up some tables and chairs uh, if you have some time. And then if you're here and you're around at the end, we could use some help cleaning up as well. Uh, the ladies' ministry is collecting items for some of the homeless people in our community. Uh, that's going to go to the, uh, the, all of the supplies will go to the Brighter Days Shelter, which is part of the Love Chapel. And uh, they are collecting those supplies. You can see that at uh, Connection Central. Just go to the snowman. If you haven't seen the snowman, check out the snowman. I think we could do a fundraiser of uh, just uh, trying to sell that thing afterwards. Uh, that's neat. Whoever, I don't know who built that or put that together, but that is neat. Uh, and the ladies are also having a Christmas luncheon uh, Sunday, December the 4th at noon. And you can sign up for that at Connection Central as well. Um, don't forget uh, Ron and Friends concert, Christmas concert on December the 11th here at church. Um, you do need a ticket for that. It's a free ticket. Uh, but if you want to see us out at Connection Central, you can get a ticket for that as well. We just need to know how many we're having. And if you're thinking about it, you might want to get your tickets because I know we've already given out about a 250, 260 tickets uh, for December 11th in the Christmas concert. So that's a great thing. Also at Connection Central, uh, we have the new devotion books in, our daily bread, and then there's one that is specifically a 10-day uh, Christmas devotion reflection for Christmas. So you can pick those up out there too. If you would stand, we'll go over some prayer concerns, and the, we will pray and be ready to... Uh, uh, to exit here today. Please be in prayer for Barb Jasper. Uh, she's having some tests, uh, may, possible cancer there. So be in prayer for her. Uh, Beth Taylor is having uh, problems with blood clots. Uh, continue to pray for Geneva Abner and Rosalie Hooper and Martha Duke. Um, Donald Mowry, who is Bob Mowry's younger brother, uh, is having some complications as well. So keep him in your prayers. And Patricia Dobson is having some tests run as well. I'll just throw in, uh, maybe pray for Ron's eyesight, uh, since he's having, or, no, take that, or maybe his mind to remember his glasses so that he could have the eyesight, how's that? We'll, we'll, go, with, we'll go with that. Uh, in all um, seriousness, though, thank you guys. Um, God is good. Amen. When? Yes, Absolutely. God is good all the time, right? All the time, God is good. And so with that in mind, we are going into a Thanksgiving week here. Just be thankful. Be thankful for so many things in our lives and the way he takes care of us and our blessings. Would you pray with me, please? Heavenly Father, we, uh, we are in awe of what you do. We're in awe of your goodness. And we don't always understand um, your plan and how things are unfolding in our lives. But we do know Romans 8, 28. And we do believe in that. And so thankful that that was brought up this morning. So, Father, we want to turn over all these uh, prayer requests to you right now, Lord. And we want to just uh, lay them at the cross, lay them at your feet, and let you deal with them. And only the way you know they need to be dealt with. Um, 
Father, we pray for your will to be done. We also pray for all the events and activities that are taking place during these holiday seasons and uh, just pray through all of it that you are always in the midst, at the forefront, and that you get all glory and honor for everything that is happening. So, Father, we thank you for today. As we leave this building, help us to now go out and be your church. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.